have a very important topic to discuss this evening. My Quran is sacred to all those who believe, to the Muslims. We believe it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He spoke it. He spoke it and revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We believe that part of our worship would be the recitation of the Quran. Allah Almighty has instructed us that during the five daily prayers, these prayers would be incomplete if we didn't recite a portion of that revelation known as the Quran within every unit of prayer. So we consider it totally sacred. We believe in its authenticity and we would be very, very hurt if someone were to desecrate the pages of the Quran or if someone were to do something that would be disrespectful to the Quran. The same applies to the Hadith. Although the Hadith is not the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is the word of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And he is relating it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the Hadith is a term that is not as broad as the term Sunnah. When we say Sunnah, it refers to many things. But when you say Hadith, it's the statements of the Prophet sallallahu It's the deeds of the Prophet sallallahu It is the uh, confirmations. Uh, it is the... Uh, reiterations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and so on. This is considered to us sacred. We believe in the sunnah. We believe in the hadith. If anyone were to actually say something nasty, it would hurt us. Let's talk about the Quran for a moment. In the Quran, Allah tells us as Muslims that وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ Allah says, don't mock at or swear at those who are calling out to deities besides Allah. So you have people who worship anything and everything. Allah says, yes, we know you disagree with them. We do disagree. But Allah says, be respectful in your disagreement. Don't mock at them and don't swear at them. So if you find someone worshiping a pole or worshiping uh, whatever it may be, you know, this, the thing that we may consider really absurd. I mean, worshiping a shape made of the defecation of an animal and uh, that, I mean, I've seen it with my own two eyes, is, is to me crazy, but that's very dear to them. So Allah says, you disagree. We will disagree. I do disagree, but offer them a certain level of consideration when talking to them, when talking about them, when inviting them towards what you believe is right, simply because in that verse, Allah says, don't mock at those who are calling out to deities besides Allah because they will mock at Allah out of hatred without knowledge. Guess who would have caused it? Your initial mocking would have resulted in a, a skittle effect. It would have you know, a reaction and that reaction has another reaction and that has another reaction and so on. So Allah says, wait, when something is very close to the hearts of people, be careful how you address the matter. This is a very powerful teaching in the Quran. And Allah spoke it and told it to us through Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If you were to read the Quran, it definitely stands out from all other books that are in existence. It stands out totally and completely. It's very unique. It's a different book. I've read a lot of the scriptures of a lot of faiths. In some cases, whole scriptures, and in some cases, parts of it. And I tell you, I'm so so glad to be a Muslim and to be one of the members of uh, the Qur'an, Ahlul Qur'an, meaning may Allah make us from the people of the Qur'an, you know, those who give importance to it. Why am I saying this? Because when we are taught as Muslims not to laugh at, mock at, joke about, abuse, desecrate, you know, disrespect, those who are calling out to deities besides Allah simply because of the reaction that will happen, because it's too close to the heart, we expect a reciprocation as Muslims, which means we also would like others to be equally human, to not to mock at, scoff at, abuse, desecrate the Quran. If they did, it would hurt us tremendously. And what happens, you look at the Quran, Allah says, there will be a reaction when you do something. Every action has a reaction. So you may think you're secularly free to do an action, but you may not be able to control the reaction when it comes from general human beings. Not everyone is going to be on a specific level. Not everyone will be able to take a punch and just keep quiet. You know, people will react differently. So the Quran tells us, be considerate of the reactions of people. 
by behaving yourself when it comes to talking about your differences. Allah says, be respectful. And this is why I've always said that, you know, have a level of respect, even with those you disagree. And some people say, how can I, how can I respect, you know, that which is in transgression of Allah? Respecting doesn't mean you agree nor does it mean that you are condoning it. It only means the way you speak is respectful. The way you address the matter is respectful. The way you come across is absolutely mature. You are considerate of the feelings of the people who may consider that very dear. I give you an example. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, considered to be by the Sunni Muslims, the best person to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When people swear him, curse him, that's where a problem arises. You don't like him, you don't want to agree with him, you think he wasn't a good guy, well, we think the opposite, but if you think that, you can express your thoughts and you can believe what you want, be respectful about it. That's where it is. The same applies to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu or Aisha radiallahu anha or Hafsa radiallahu anha, or Uthman radiallahu anha, or any one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, or the Prophets themselves, all of them, even a pious person. I mean, how many of us would ever uh, just sit down and relax when our mothers are being sworn at, taunted, and so on? I think there is a limit beyond which people would react violently. May Allah protect all of us because that's not healthy at all. But sometimes those who act don't consider the reaction. And sometimes they calculate it and they want it. And sometimes they, they actually would like to see something happening. You know, I was recently reading uh, something very strange, which said certain people do certain things because they want you to react in a certain way that your brain has been tuned to react so that they can f go ahead with an agenda that they have. And I'm like, Subhanallah, Rabbil Alameen. May Allah protect us. So we have to be very respectful and we ask others to also be respectful to that which really we consider sacred. And when we disagree, we should disagree respectfully. And when others disagree with us, we expect them to disagree respectfully. If someone were to be disrespectful, my brothers and sisters, I know that it pains the heart, but bear patience. Allah says it in the Quran. We know that it pains your heart what they're saying about you. He tells Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know that it hurts your heart, but be patient, worship Allah, and find yourself from among those who are prostrate, meaning who prostrate often. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect every one of us. I'd like to call on those of other faiths as well uh, to take a page from what I've just said now regarding the message of the Quran, which says, don't mock at or, or, or abuse or desecrate or disrespect those who uh, worship others besides Allah because of the reaction that will happen. We're taught that. So we want you to also take a page from that and offer us similar respect, inshallah. I know it's our duty as leaders also to uh, inform and to uh, instruct those who look up to us never to engage in hooliganism to try and solve a problem that's existing. So you find someone has uh, desecrated the Quran, like I said, people's reactions will be different. I don't have control over the people, but I will say, don't ever react in a way that would create two problems out of one. Always engage people, always try to speak to them, always try to convince them. I have found it very beneficial. In fact, many, countless people have actually turned to Islam after their hatred of Islam, simply because of a beautiful reaction to what they did or said. And they then began to ponder and they then started learning and reading and they then were given guidance by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, recently there is something that has happened and it's not the first time. I'm sure things like this will continue happening every now and again. Let's react in a positive way. It's a moment where people are going to open up uh, the internet and various books and libraries and so on to research more about Islam. So let's seize that opportunity to uh, portray it in the correct sense, uh, which is the most beautiful, beautiful of teachings that Islam has. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who can uh, protect revelation and at the same time may He make us as human beings those who can respect one another even when we differ. And I want to end off by repeating something. Some people don't understand what is meant by respecting the difference. 
they actually think it means we agree or we're condoning or we don't or we're watering down. It's none of that. It is just to address the matters respectfully and to be able to react in a respectful way. That's all we're saying.